So thanks for joining us. Uh, final presentation I'll be giving today. Um, our original speaker, Brent Rollins from Spraylock, is extremely knowledgeable, wonderful guy, and will answer any questions, uh, family emergencies taken care of, bless him. So today we're talking about nanosilica hydrogels for rejuvenating deteriorated concrete. And this was based off of a, a research project that originally started with DARPA. It was called um, uh, BRACE. Biological Rejuvenation of Aged Concrete Edifices, one of the best titles I've ever heard. Uh, before I wanted to talk about the technology and how it was used, um, I wanted to define a hydrogel in the very basic sense. It is a three-dimensional structure, either from natural synthetic polymers that ultimately uh, envelops water and in our case does a lot of it more. Um, there's natural forms, collagen, starches, bacterial cellulose, and then there are synthetic forms, some silicates, polyvinyl alcohol, polyacrylic acid, and then colloidal or nanosilica in a colloidal suspension. When we talk about hydrogels, this is what we look like, this is what they look like. We might not see them when they're in the concrete, but when we create them in the lab, they look like a jelly, and then over time they harden. Now, Oh, that was a really cool animation. The reason why we do all this work and we care about this is the, the unspoken harsh reality of the concrete industry is that concrete is still cracking. We put somewhere around $48 billion of new concrete out there every day or every year. Not every day, that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> we have $8.3 billion of concrete maintenance to deal with every year. Now, if you bought a truck and it cost you 50000 and you put 8000 back into the truck the first year you had it, you might have a Ford. <laughs> but you might feel like something was wrong and, hey, I'm not saying concrete is broken. Failure is not an option and we do need to fix what we don't understand. And there are my numbers. We have over 600,000 concrete bridges in our national inventory. $48 billion a year industry, yet we put $8.3 billion back into concrete to deal with the maintenance associated with chemical and physical attack. That's just the harsh reality. And the good news is we understand, to a certain degree, our infrastructure problem, where it comes from. And the root cause of this problem is, you know, I, I said no science questions, and I'm not talking science, but it happens to be that deterioration in concrete attack happens on a molecular scale. It does. Um, and we see it over time. And that harsh reality that concrete is very difficult to put in, but it's even tougher to pull back out, landfill, and then make a new one. And what we find with concrete is not all concrete mixes are created the same, but as it turns out, concrete deterioration is pretty dang similar across the board. We have concrete that dries out, it gets wet, it gets dry, it gets wet, it goes through volume change, and with volume change, it cracks. And as it cracks, it can, gets more water, more water with salts, and then we start having corrosion. And for those taking pictures, I promise you this will be online for free. Um, what we do with hydrogels is we spray on, or coat, or paint on, or roller on, or in some cases inject a technology that will take advantage of the poor water solution, so that's the water in our percolated concrete, our cracked and poured up concrete, that has alkali sulfates, hydroxides in it, and with our nanosilica technology, or spray-on technology, the poor water solution will destabilize the nanosilica in our colloidal suspension to start creating a gel that bridges the cracks, and then eventually, if there's enough silica, and calcium hydroxide in solution will change back into or change into that superhero of concrete strength, that, that calcium silicate hydrate. And I believe this is a video. So we have our concrete pour with water and alkalize. We spray on our nanosilica solution and thus the polymer process starts. We start getting this immer, uh, immature gel that bridges the cracks until eventually it starts getting created to the stronger and more durable-like material. Oh. Okay, so the average design life of bridge is 50 years. Um, you know, I, I, I used to live and work in Hoboken, New Jersey, and for these 100-year design life folks out there, 
if you, you want to see what it's like to have a hundred year infrastructure and how nasty it is, go to Hoboken. You still have the Lackawanna train station there that was built in 1920. Like try to park on Main Street. So instead of having a hundred year design life, I'd rather have a 30 year design life where I have little to no maintenance costs and at 30 years, if I want to keep it, I can make that decision. Um, with these types of technologies, we've been able to increase the life of an already deteriorated structure by 30 to 50 percent. And of course, where is the proof in the pudding? Um, there are much smarter people who have done the research out there over the decades who can go into it, especially in um, overseas, like in Delft, there's these bacteria-based hydrogels that are wild. I love these nanosilicon ones, and we've done some great work here, but I will tell you there's a lot more research on the silicate ones as well as the cellulose and starch-based hydrogels. So the work that we did with the Indiana Department of Transportation was at the Cruise Tunnel, which is a, well, I'll show you here in a second, but this is a picture of the Cruise Tunnel. Um, after we went ahead and worked on it and ultimately the concrete tunnel was going to be set for demolition because we had a lot of failing concrete from the full construction joints. Um, what we, since they were going to tear it out in I think five years, 2005, 2025, excuse me, um, we were allowed to use this for our experimental grounds. It was really fun that we were allowed to do whatever we want knowing full well they were going to destroy it. So what we wanted to use is use the cruise tunnel as, basically as I said, as experimental grounds where we want to look at how the hydrogel technology changed the wicking capacity of the concrete from a surface application. Um, using hydrogels are fairly easy. Um, it was a quick power wash with your conventional standard 3 to 3500 PSI to remove salt and we concrete, um, I believe it was said it was around 40 cents a square foot for preparation, unless they had to come back with a hammer and sound out the nasty concrete. You allow the surface to get to a surface saturated dry condition. Again, we don't want dry pores, we want pores that are filled with water. And then we're applying the hydrogel technology at 125 square foot per gallon until the concrete can't take anymore. And it's normally in 500 square foot per gallon bursts. This was our job site. I did the rendition there. It's very nice, rudimentary. But seven or 400 full, uh, foot long tunnel with seven full construction joints. This tunnel used to be used to ferry back and forth rare Fords from the 30s and 40s, something like that, Dan. Um, what happened was the, because it was a full construction joint and we hadn't put flashing in it when it was originally built in 2002, a lot of the water came through water and salts causing corrosion not only to the steel but also ultimately to the concrete leading to the issue. So we came through there. On the pink side we only cleaned the joint area and on the gray side we not only cleaned but we placed the hydrogel technology. Um, we came back four months later to take samples that were then put through ASTMC 1585 which is the uh, I call it the wicking test, but it is the water sorptivity test, fantastic test. We also had a third party verify our results in any place where we put the hydrogel technology, we found that there was a lower wicking sorptivity or uh, a, a lower wicking capacity. So there was less water or the concrete could absorb less water when we were using the hydrogel. Not only did we take uh, samples, but we also came back and took pictures. I don't know how well you can see it with the light here, but on the left side we have our reference without the eddy stone or without the hydrogel technology, and you can clearly see the water showing through as opposed to the right-hand side where we have our hydrogel technology and you have a drier look. Um, let me take it a step further. Uh, this was 18 hours after we placed the technology. Um, we were getting severe rain in Indiana and all the joints were leaking through. Now, with this type of technology, it relies on water to start building itself up. We're still dealing with nanosilica and our, our water still has a tendency of having calcium hydroxide or other deposits of calcium in there. So what we find is more water is better for these hydrogels to start building them up and not dehydrating out. Um, and what we saw here after 18 hours, well on the left hand side, um, we still had water leaching through and on the right hand side where we applied the hydrogel technology, 
we didn't see that um, water leak through. So summary of the presentation, I wanted to define a hydrogel. I wanted you to see why, what it looks like, why do we care, as well as how can we use them. I, I did a short review of the corrosion process, and then I wanted to review a case study. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the folks that helped put this together, and then open up the floor for any and all questions. Thank you very much.